Hi, my name is Cecilia Torfin and today I want to welcome you to explore this virtual tour of Eurojust, the European Union's Agency for Criminal Justice Cooperation. Created in 2002, Eurojust is located in The Hague, the Netherlands, in the international city of peace and justice. In this beautiful building, which was inaugurated in 2017, around 130 prosecutors and investigative judges from over 30 countries work side by side to tackle all forms of serious cross-border crime. They give hands-on assistance to their colleagues in the national judicial authorities who are working on international criminal investigations and prosecutions, tackling all forms of crime, serious cross-border crime, including terrorism, drug smuggling, human trafficking, cybercrime or economic crime, such as money laundering. So why Eurojust? The European Union is based on freedom, and this is not just an abstract catchphrase, it's a principle that determines our daily lives. The free movement of goods, services, capital and persons gives us the opportunities we need to thrive economically, socially and personally. But to safeguard these principles, two other pillars of the EU are equally important, security and justice. We cannot allow criminals to take advantage of those freedoms. And as crime knows no borders, Europe needs to fight crime across borders as well. In this virtual tour, we offer you the possibility to take a closer look at how we are working and how this agency is set up. The Eurojust building is surrounded by a dune landscape and a water feature, which form a necessary security barrier. Together with the color scheme and materials used inside the building, including a lot of copper, the building intimately reflects the character of the host city, The Hague, a city in the dunes by the sea. In mid-2017, Eurojust moved to its custom-made and permanent premises in the international zone of The Hague. The office building was designed by an integrated design team comprised of Meccano Architects, Royal Haskoning and DS Landscape Architects. It's a purpose-built facility, constructed and owned by the Dutch state and rented to Eurojust. The office building and its premises cover over 18,000 square meters and are home to more than 400 workplaces and dedicated state-of-the-art conference and interpretation facilities. A connected underground parking space of more than 7,000 square meters can house up to 276 cars and 100 bicycles for employees and visitors. It's equipped with a number of electric charging points to stimulate driving electric vehicles to and from work. The building's architecture represents the core values of Eurojust. It's, it's a very, very light building which doesn't provide just a good working environment, but it also underlines actually the importance of transparency in public administration, which is necessary to achieve justice. The interior layout encourages interaction, collaboration and mutual trust between the key operational stakeholders at Eurojust by facilitating face-to-face -face meetings, one-to-one -one or in a big group, and bringing the different strands of Eurojust together in one place. The use of natural materials, a neutral color palette and a high quality finish in everything results in a pleasant working environment which is perfectly suited to the many nationalities that work. So here we are in the lobby of the Eurojust building and in fact the structure of the building is also reflecting how Eurojust is set up. Here above me we have the low rise of the building and this is where the national members and their teams have their offices. They are senior prosecutors and investigative judges who are seconded from the national judicial authorities and thus not employed by the EU but representing the member states they come from. And usually the secondments to Eurojust last several years, meaning that they get to know each other very well, they build very close collegial relationships as a basis for creating trust and mutual understanding. And this is actually key to a good result, since judicial cooperation between sovereign states requires a thorough understanding of legal frameworks and of legal cultures. Over here, you can take the elevator up to the high-rise part of the building and here about 240 support staff are working in what we call the administration of Eurojust. These are people who are directly employed by the agency and serving the national desks in their work. 
Judicial cooperation officers are available to help and assist the national representatives in the casework and they also build the center of expertise in cross-border judicial cooperation that Eurojust forms. The experts also produce best practice reports and organize thematic events for prosecutors specialized in a particular crime type which regularly take place here. Other staff members ensure the security of the building, logistical services, IT systems, arrange translations and interpretation services and ensure of course the proper management of budgets and of staff. All cases brought before Eurojust involve two or more countries seeking to solve a serious cross-border crime. It starts when a prosecutor or investigative judge identifies a cross-border element in the investigation and contacts the national member of his or her country to get assistance. But beyond that, each criminal case is different and requires an individual approach. Sometimes a rapid response is needed when prosecutors want to act immediately to locate and apprehend suspects. In such cases, they can rely on Eurojust's unique on-call services and contact the national desks to quickly make the right connections with authorities in another country, exchange information, understand the exact legal requirements and prepare the transmission of legal cooperation requests, such as the European arrest warrant, for example, which is the basis to take action. Other investigations last several months or years and they require careful planning, coordination and discussion in which Eurojust and the national desks play a coordinating role. Check out the coordination meeting room and the coordination centre videos to find out more. Complex cross-border crime investigations can last several months or years and they require careful planning and coordination and discussion in which Eurojust and the national desks play a coordinating role. Let me now take you down to one of the coordination meeting rooms and tell you more about how this work is done. Here we are in one of the secure meeting rooms which are used to hold case-specific coordination meetings. The prosecutor in charge of the case can organize one or several such meetings so that all actors needed in the case can meet face-to-face -face in a secure environment. The number of countries and participants entirely depends on the case and may include judiciary, law enforcement of course, and Europol. The European Union Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation regularly participates, as well as representations of customs or food security authorities depending on the crimes committed. And we also regularly have OLAF here, the EU Anti-Fraud Office. They meet here face to face or via a secure video conferencing system to share case information and case files, identify possible parallel investigations and work out which country is best placed to prosecute a suspect. They also prepare the use of judicial cooperation instruments such as a European arrest warrant or European investigation order and they also plan the collection of evidence uh, which is of course very important once the case goes to trial. There is a possibility to have simultaneous interpretation into all EU languages so that each participant can speak his or her own language so that language doesn't become a barrier to understanding each other. Regularly, the countries are also assisted to form a joint investigation team. This is an agreement that enables direct cooperation between judiciary and law enforcement authorities for a specific purpose and a specific period of time. The advantage is that the partners in AJIT can cooperate more effectively, including directly collecting and exchanging evidence, and they can also be present during investigative measures on each other's territories. Complex coordinated actions can also result in the organization of a joint action day in which the countries come together to monitor the joint action day here from our coordination center. Here we are inside the coordination center from which such joint action days can be monitored and supported in real time with the assistance of Eurojust's casework unit. It has secure data connections and makes it possible to centralize continuous contacts between all the judicial authorities and law enforcement involved, immediately analyze the information as it is reported from the field and take the required action.
If you would like to step into the shoes of a prosecutor who is working here during one of those joint action days, please play our simulation game. It's a simulation of a coordination center and we actually take you on a journey, step by step, what happens during one of those days. But this time, you're in charge. You have to take the decisions to bring the case to a successful close. Good luck. Now let's talk a bit about how Eurojust is governed. Each member state appoints a national member to Eurojust and together they form Eurojust College. They run the operational work together, but they also take decisions on budget and on other managerial issues, such as the multi-annual programming of the agency. They meet every week in this room, which has an oval-shaped table, and this is very much reflecting the way they take their decisions, which is as a group. They appoint a president who is seated over here and two vice presidents, and they each serve a term of four years. In December 2019, the new Eurojust regulation entered into force, and this led to the creation of an executive board, which is supporting the college in its decision-making procedures and where the European Commission is also taking part. The 240 staff who are working in the administration of Eurojust are reporting to an administrative director. Since crime doesn't stop at EU borders, Eurojust has developed a cohesive international network that grants prosecutors around the European Union access to more than 50 jurisdictions worldwide. The agency has signed cooperation agreements with dozens of non-EU states, several of which have seconded liaison prosecutors to Eurojust. They can work closely together on cases with the national members from their counterparts in the college. Eurojust also works closely with other EU agencies and partners that support the various stages in the criminal justice chain, including law enforcement and anti-fraud bodies, and houses the secretariats of other key networks supporting judicial authorities at EU level, including the European Judicial Network, the EU Genocide Network, and a network that specifically supports experts on joint investigation teams. One of the artworks created especially for Eurojust stands outside of the building. It's a large bronze statue by Spanish sculptor Fernando Sanchez Castillo. It's called Reflection and it portrays a woman seated on a rock in a position similar to that of Rodin's thinker. As a way to celebrate the cultural diversity at Eurojust, the EU member state that holds the rotating EU presidency is also invited to offer a display of pieces of art in the Eurojust building. Thank you very much for joining me on this virtual tour of Eurojust, and I hope you have enjoyed finding out a little bit about what we do here. If you're curious about knowing more, please explore our website for press releases, information on our operational results, and all sorts of reports and fact sheets. You can also follow us on social media. We are on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And we also have a quarterly newsletter that you can receive by email. Finally, if you're interested in coming and visiting us in person, you can request a visit, a study visit via our website. Thank you again and hope to see you soon.